guys, we're back with my 2022 Subaru BRZ, and the BRZ is now in winter mode. We've got a new set of winter tires, and I just installed an unequal length catted header. So, this thing sounds a little bit better. Let's show you a couple of the mods, and then we'll go for a drive and see how it does on the road. So first, the winter tires. This is a set of Falcon Winter Peak F Ice Ones, because F Ice, why not? Looks like a rally tire. They're surprisingly cheap. They're about 88 bucks online. Falcon sent me these to test, and I haven't really seen any winter tire reviews of these. Uh, there's not a lot of information on them, and so far, they've been great. Awesome traction in the dry, better traction in the wet than the X-Ices, uh, a set of WS90s. Wet traction in these is actually excellent. They look great, they handle great, they're quiet. Uh, we'll give you guys some driving impressions here in the wet and the dry today. It's pretty salty out, pretty dusty out, so there's a little bit less traction on the roads today than usual, but um, yeah, the BRZ is looking proper. Let's pop the hood and show you guys this header. I picked this up on eBay, paid $600 for it, installed it in the garage. This is a first gen header. You can see it down there. It's ceramic coated. It, the install was pretty easy, pretty straightforward. The only problem is that the overpipe connection, the flange is at a little bit of a different angle than it should be for the second gen car to connect to the exhaust. So I had to put a couple of um, gaskets in there and some RTV. And uh, between those two, it seemed to make a pretty good seal, but it was a little bit tricky to get installed correctly. We'll throw some exhaust clips in this video so you can hear it with the MRT Street Touring axle back. Um, other changes, <laughs> one thing, I haven't really talked much about this tow hitch been using this on the regular to haul my mountain bike around. It's a torque lift, eco hitch, hidden hitch, whatever you want to call it from the previous generation. Got that on eBay too for a couple hundred bucks. It's been modified to fit this second gen BRZ. So a little bit of cutting, a little bit of trimming needed to be done. Uh, you have to got to pull the rear bumper off. Um, I didn't install that. Keone at Caps Garage did the install on that. Did a really nice job and it works great. I've been running the hitch pretty much 100% of the time since I installed it, but if you want to, you can pull it off very easily. There's a quick release, or basically just like a bolt that you unbolt, pull it down, you get rid of it for a little bit, put it back on if you want it again. But I have so much ground clearance in this car, I'm not really worried about bottoming out with it. I did put some red Loctite on that bolt so it doesn't loosen up. I noticed that after a couple times hauling my mountain bike around, it was getting a little bit loose. So if you do install a hitch on your BRZ, that's something that I would recommend doing. Otherwise, the car's pretty much been untouched. Let's go for a drive, see how it does. Stock tune, no changes there. Probably won't go about tuning this car. I feel like with a catted header and an axle back that's pretty conservative, pretty quiet, it's just not really necessary. And I'm pretty happy with the power levels in this BRZ. I did notice the catted unequal length header seem to increase throttle response and low down torque a little bit so no dyno verified numbers there but my butt dyno is telling me that this car has a little bit uh, a little bit more torque down low and then in the mid range definitely improved throttle response too. I've actually gone and disabled the pedal commander. You can just turn that on and off in the app and I'm pretty happy with the way this BRZ drives now. tires actually handle pretty well. You can hear, they're quiet. They balance 
balanced quite well. No issues with that. It seems like they're a bit harder of a compound than some of the competition, which for my use is actually really nice. We don't get as much snow as we used to here in Michigan. And a lot of our days are dry, a lot of our days are wet, like this, just salty and dusty. And a harder winter tire compound seems to work pretty well. I don't think they'll have as good snow and ice performance as something like a Blizzak or the Michelin X Ice, but I'm willing to give up a little bit of that for better livability and drivability the other 90% of the time. And it's still a winter tire, so it's gonna do quite well in the snow. Much better than an all season and much better than the set of Falcon Wild Peak AT Trail all-terrain tires that I had on this previously. I mean, traction here is just, it's actually really impressive. Good braking performance. I've been just ragging on these tires for the last couple weeks. They haven't worn down very much. Yeah, I'm a fan. What do you guys think about the header? It's a little bit quiet. This exhaust is pretty quiet. This MRT Street Touring is a much more conservative axle back. Uh, it's just barely louder than stock. I think it sounds nice. I've been putting my uh, rear seats down occasionally just to kind of get a little bit of extra volume out of the back. We might try that here real quick, actually. Still get some pops and crackles on downshifts. That's always fun. All right, let's fold down these seats, see what that does. sounds better. A little bit more Subaru rumble. And I'm older. I like a more mild exhaust these days. a little bit of the drone from this MRT axle back with the seats down. Seats up, zero drone, completely silent. Seats down, there was a little bit of unpleasantly low tone coming out of the exhaust uh, at lower RPMs, but it seems to have kind of raised that pitch a little bit. It's pretty comfortable, it's pretty livable. A lot quieter than the Corsa that I had on my previous gen BRZ. This is great, I could spend all day driving this around. Other updates, got a new phone mount. Finally, I have a place to put my phone here in the BRZ. I uh, got this on Etsy. It says Discover Innovation. It's just a MagSafe mount. It was like under $30. You just Google BRZ 
MagSafe Etsy 3D printed mount, it'll pop up. And uh, it's really solid, it just kind of clicks in there with pressure. You don't have to do any drilling, there's no sticking. Um, it's a pretty nice design. And if you have a new MagSafe phone, you can also set it up with a charger, but I just plug my cable in. Half the time, I don't even really need to charge my phone when I'm going on shorter trips in my car. And these Winter Peak F Ice One tires. <laughs> I love the name. They're so stable at high speeds. That's one thing with winter tires, they can get a little bit squishy, especially in the sizing that I have. These are 205 60 R16s. Those taller sidewalls can get a little bit sketchy, especially I had some experience with, uh, uh, what do we have? We had a set of uh, Michelin X-Ice snows on here last. The sidewalls were a lot squishier than these F-Ice ones. As a result, these are pretty fun to drive on. They break away progressively, give you a little bit of steering feel. No tread vibrations, they broke in pretty quickly, no issues uh, right off the bat with balancing or noise. They're pretty nice. Just, I have no idea how to handle in the snow because it has been so warm and so dry. And we've had a lot of rain too. They do very well in the wet, and that's important. now. It feels good. It sounds nice too. These tires should do pretty well in the dirt and mud as well. Deep, wide treads. I contacted Falcon actually originally mentioned them and he said you know you should try these out. Always thought these would make for pretty good rally tires. So we'll have to see how they do. That's great grip back there. Really nice turn in. Again do that stiffer front sidewall. This almost handles like an all season with just a little bit less grip which is a pretty high compliment to a winter tire. changes that I've done in the gauge cluster recently with the BRZ added a gear indicator. It only shows what gear you're in after you've let the clutch out, which is a bit strange, so there's a bit of a delay. And then I kind of lowered my shift point to 7,000 RPM. It turns yellow at that point. See how it does on dirt. Pretty hard packed, pretty dry today. here. There we go. Foam mount does have its limits. The 
and Wild Peak AT trails were pretty unbeatable on dirt, gravel, and in mud. They were insane. I feel like instead of all trains, would be better in the mud just for the ability to evacuate all the debris and stuff, but this feels pretty good out here. so much grip out here the tires are squealing recently filmed a video on this brz versus the s2000 and it was an interesting video because i love the s2000 it's so much fun but think about this car you can do everything with it i don't need a hard top or a roll bar to take it to the track i i don't need to do much to it from the factory to get it ready to have fun with doesn't need a lot of maintenance. I mean, oh, this thing is just, it's so good. It does everything. I affectionately call it my sports car utility vehicle. Cause I can tow my mountain bike. I can put my son in the back. It does pretty much everything I would want to do in a big SUV, but uh, it's way more fun and way more capable on the road. running the stock brake pads just because they don't dust and they, they keep the white wheels very very white but that is the weak link on this car right now they work okay once you get some heat in them but those first few stops are kind of sketchy that's something i would like to upgrade at some point if anyone has any suggestions for a low dust pad with a better bite than stock let me know that would be awesome on these tires no understeer you can just very easily control the balance <laughs> that's pretty typical when you take away grip but I think part of that neutral character is due to the stiffer sidewall that extra turn that you get versus other winter tires That range right when you're sitting on the highway at about 3,000 to 4,000 RPM. That's where I've seen the most increase in torque with this header. Yeah, it just feels good. Not sure it's necessarily a mod that I would recommend. It's honestly probably not worth the money. But if you want the sound and a little bit better throttle response drivability, it does help get a good deal on a previous gen header I would recommend it just uh, get ready to work with that exhaust flange just a little bit The 
much done. I'm kind of at exactly where I always wanted to be with this build. It's kind of perfect for me and for what I wanted out of it. I built this car for Michigan roads. I built it to handle the potholes, to handle the, the winters, to do everything that I wanted out of a car. I wanted it to be able to haul my mountain bike. I wanted it to be fun. Okay, maybe I'm not tracking it really that much, but <laughs> I've got the Civic Type R for that. And maybe the S2000 someday, who knows? It's kind of old. It needs a lot of work to be track worthy. Type R is pretty much ready to rock and roll. This is fun on track though, but it needs cooling and it needs brakes. And I'm also not sure if I trust the oil pressure. So that's fine. I'm having so much fun with this as a street car and it's kind of the way I like it. Occasional rally cross maybe, we'll see. say this exhaust setup sounds perfect from the outside and cold starts are very mild not waking up my neighbors every morning it's a smooth clean tone not raspy like some other exhausts out there just slightly louder than stock and I think with the seats down it's kind of perfect and if you want it to quiet down, just put the seats up, go on a road trip, cruise all day. It's pretty much about the same volume as stock, unless if you get, really get into it. This MRT Street Touring is a little bit lower at lower RPMs. The thing I like about it, though, is it doesn't drown out the engine noise, the induction sound. It almost kind of fades away at higher revs, lets that engine take over and fill up the cabin, which is, I think, kind of cool. If you guys are listening to this video with headphones, you'll be able to kind of listen to that difference. Okay, quick drive in the BRZ. Let's see if that massive bump did any damage. Probably not. That's why we have braid wheels, extra strong. Don't go rallying around Michigan dirt roads without them. Yeah, we're fine. <laughs> I will have to say, through some of the punishment that I've put this BRZ through already and rally cross, the off-road course we did a few weeks ago, winter driving, just driving around on potholed roads. This thing is tremendously resilient and suspension is, knock on wood, held up incredibly well. Again, just stock suspension and the ADF lift kit for the previous gen BRZ. Run these winter tires in the cold months and then once things warm up for the rest of the year i'm going to run the stock wheels on a set of the michelin pilot sport all season four tires and that's it two wheel and tire setup
feel like a hero every day. And it does sound good now. This thing, it's a little ripper. Still so soft, so comfortable over bumps. I drove this modified WRX the other day on coilovers, and it was pretty stiff. It felt like it'd probably be awesome on track, but hit some larger bumps in it, and it, it beat you up a little bit. And then we took the BRZ out, and it, <laughs> it was like just driving a Camry or something. It was just so, so nice over the bumps. You can hit railroad tracks in this at, at full tilt, no issues. about 1.4 degrees of negative camber up front with the camber bolts and uh, that feels great makes a difference even on winter tires to reduce understeer improve turn in if you're still watching thanks so much for tuning in we'll get back to you guys with some more winter driving videos in this brz this year maybe a tarmac rally cross uh, maybe a dirt rally cross. We'll see how these tires do in the dirt. I think that would be kind of fun too. Um, so we'll see. Still having fun in this thing. Still loving it. Really enjoying this car. This is, I think, just maybe the most fun car I've owned except for my 94 black Miata, which I still miss. The thing with that Miata is that you couldn't quite do the the dirt, the winter stuff with that. I could have changed it. I could have modified it to do so. But um, this thing just, it's so good. Would recommend. <laughs> Even after all the YouTubers have sold theirs. Uh, yeah, I just, you can't go wrong with a BRZ or a GR86. If you live somewhere where the roads are a little bit better, get a GR86. I actually kind of prefer the GR86 interior and looks a little bit better. The front end of the BRZ isn't, it's kind of weird looking. It's okay, it's fine. But GR86 I think is, is a more attractive design, a little bit more cohesive, I think. And I'm not a big fan of all the red stitching in the BRZ, but it's okay. It's all good. You kind of can't go wrong. At this point, I'm too far into this car to do anything about it, change it up. slippery with all the salt out here. After that initial slip though, these tires just, they grip. <laughs> Alright, see you guys.